Hi everyone, this is Maths for Uni. This is the work solution to question 10 from the worksheet for lecture 5. If you enjoy this content, then please consider liking and subscribing, as well as checking out our full Udemy course, of which the link is in the description. The question says, show that the equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 335 has no integer solutions. It's not immediately clear how we can apply the techniques from lecture 5 on modular arithmetic to demonstrate that there are no integer solutions. In practice, if you were to apply this method, then you would choose a few different moduli, check all the cases, and ensure that none of them worked. Here, it turns out, as we'll see, that an appropriate modulo to choose is modulo 8. But you could check a few up to this, like mod 6, mod 5, mod 7, and so on, if you were understandably unsure of where to start. So if we proceed modulo 8, and later we'll discuss why this modulo is useful, then we should start by taking our equation here, modulo 8. On the right hand side, we have 3, 3, 5, modulo 8, which is because 3, 3, 5 is 320 plus 15, and 320 is a multiple of 8. This is, say, 15 modulo 8, and then this is 7 after removing the 8 from 15. Therefore, in modulo notation, our equation above becomes x squared plus y squared plus z squared is congruent to 7 modulo 8. And it makes sense to do this because we're going to use a contradiction method where we assume that such an integer solution exists for x, y, and z. Now, what do we get when we square the integers modulo 8? Well, let's check all of the cases. We can use our integer as x throughout. So if x is congruent to 0, this is the first case, modulo 8, then we have x squared also being congruent to 0 just by multiplying, modulo 8. If x is congruent to 1, modulo 8, then we have x squared also being congruent to 1, modulo 8. Let's say we have 2, then this would give 4 when we square. Hopefully things get interesting soon. Let's say we have 3. Well, here's where the number isn't quite as clear because of the modulo. We actually get 1 because, of course, we have 9 after squaring, and then we reduce modulo 8 to get 1. Next, we have the case of 4. This will give us 16, but of course, this is just 0 in modulo 8. Next, we have 5, and this gives 25 after squaring, which is just 1, because we have 24 plus 1, and 24 is a multiple of 8. Next, we have x being congruent to 6. This gives us 36. But, of course, that's just 4 after removing the 32. And then the very last case, finally, is x being congruent to 7. This gives us 49, but that's just 1 in modulo 8. These results that we have here is the nice thing about using modulo 8 when we square. We only have three possible values when we square an integer in modulo 8. We only get 0, 1, or 4 
throughout. We have another one here, a zero, one, four, and one. So we can only get zero, one, and four when we square in modulo eight. This makes it a good modulo to consider for situations involving squares of integers in general. Now, all we need to do to check that there are no solutions to our modulo equation is to check all of the cases for adding up the three squares, x squared, y squared, and z squared, where each of these values will only take the value 0, 1, or 4, as we showed previously. And we need to check that we, we can't possibly get the value of 7 in any of these cases. If we approach this systematically, say starting with all zeros, then we have 0 plus 0 plus 0 for our three squares. This is congruent to 0 mod 8, so that's not 7, so we're all good. Then we have, say, two zeros is the next case. This has the two possible situations, 0 plus 0 plus 1, or 0 plus 0 plus 4. The first one is congruent to 1, and the second one is congruent to 4, both modulo 8. You may wonder why we don't consider permutations, like having the 1 being here instead, and then the two zeros. But by symmetry, if these don't work, then they won't work in the other permutations where we just swap, swap the order of x, y, and z. The next case is just one zero. Here there are some more cases involved. We can have zero plus one plus one, or zero plus one plus four, or zero plus four plus four. The first gives us two, the second one gives us five, and the last one gives us eight, which is zero in modulo eight. The very last case to consider is the case of no zeros. In this situation, we can have one plus one plus one, or one plus one plus four, or 1 plus 4 plus 4, or finally 4 plus 4 plus 4. These are all of the possible cases. The first one gives us 3, the second one gives us 6, the next one gives us 9, which is 1 in modulo 8, and the last one gives us 12, which is 4 in modulo 8. Now that we've checked all of the cases, and in all of them we do not get a 7, which we have in our modulo equation, we only get things like 1, 3, 4, 6, 0, 2, 5, we can be sure that our equation in modulo form, x squared plus y squared plus z squared being congruent to 7 modulo 8, has no integer solutions. Therefore, our original equation, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals, let's have a little look, what was the number again? 335 has no integer solutions either. And in fact, we can see that as long as the number here is congruent to, to 7 modulo 8, then those equations will not have integer solutions either. The takeaway message is that modulo 8 was quite useful to consider because the squares could only take one of three values, 0, 1, and 4, in modulo 8, which made checking the cases quite simple, even though there were quite a few of them. If you've enjoyed this content, then please consider liking and subscribing.
You can also check out our Udemy course, of which the link is in the description. Thanks for watching, and goodbye for now.